On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galafaro has information on how you, the angler, can add your input to fluke management. I have news on the latest fish stocking in the area, and Paul McCain has another fly tying how to. Plus, our correspondents reporting from around the island, all here at thenewfisherman.com. The fishing news is sponsored by these fine partners. Spring is here and reports are coming in for the first time in a long time. Just a reminder, this is the last week to take advantage of the Fisherman subscription sale. Get five bucks off a new or renewal subscription. That's $24.95 for 12 great issues and weekly digital content you can't get anywhere else. Best of all, with a subscription, you're part of the Dreamboat and Kayak Clash contest and your chance to win a Steigercraft center console or a new Hobie Outback kayak. Just hit subscribe on the upper right on the Fisherman.com website or call 866-347-4836. Flounder season opens April 1st, and if you want to give it a try, Captain Al Lorenzetti made this video a few years back on early season flounder fishing. Click on the card or go to this video's description on YouTube for the link. Let's check in with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen for the upcoming weekend's weather. Rich? All right, thanks, Matt. Hey, Anglers, let's check the weekend forecast here. We had a pretty good one last weekend, and let's see if we can do it again this weekend. I don't think quite as nice here. We kind of lucked out last weekend. What attempts starting things out? We got some 40s in the ocean. I was reading about the uh, mid-40s in Reynolds Channel and some 50s way back in the bay. Uh, the back bays had uh, recorded some warmer temperatures. Starting to get there, and again, wave heights. It looks like Saturday, pick of the weekend, if you want to go in the ocean. Uh, it'll start out a little gusty and then settle down a bit. Midday, late afternoon, maybe a late start Saturday is pretty good. We get those two to fours and then, yeah, right back uh, to rough weather here. Uh, southeast comes back, uh, big waves develop Sunday afternoon. So, again, a little window there. Notice the winds on Saturday morning, about 15 to 20, gust to 25 from the northwest. Settles down to about 5 to 15 midday afternoons. So it can probably get Saturday in, just give it a late start there. Uh, Saturday night's good, of course, and then, you know, southeast to east on Sunday, 15 to 25, 30, and there'll be some pretty good rain coming in, so it looks like Saturday pick of the weekend. High tides, north shore for late morning, south shore early morning on Saturday. We'll do about 61 on Saturday. It's actually a nice day, just a little gusty early, and then uh, we get some rain on Sunday, about 60 degrees, not too great. Let's check the guru quickly, see what we got going on. Again, there's those gusty winds on Saturday, but settling down 11 a.m. towards about 5 and 6 p.m. little nice window right here, so I mean, I think this will be okay. And then Sunday, yeah, not too good. You got a southeast breeze, you got rain coming in, you got the waves coming up, so it looks like um, if I had to pick, we probably have to choose uh, Saturday as the pick of the weekend. So overall, hey, every weekend can't be perfect. It was great last weekend. There'll be more to come, though. Be safe out there. Good fishing. Matt, back to you. Remember, be sure to check out News 12 for the latest weather before you head out on the water. So, I have some good news for you all. The DEC finally started stocking some of Long Island's lakes in Nassau and western Suffolk County. All the lakes received a healthy amount of brown and rainbow trout. Belmont Lake got some additional brook trout. The other Long Island lakes should be stocked any day now with fish. This is the first round of stockings, so keep an eye out for additional stockings in the future. Now, while we're on the subject of trout stocking in the lake, I wanted to share some of my thoughts with everybody. Myself, along with many others, love to target these fish every spring. They're a good way to shake off the cobwebs and bend the rod. But keep in mind, these fish are also the perfect way to get kids hooked on fishing. I remember many years ago, while trout fishing for the first time, how exciting the trip was. Catching fish made the whole experience a lot better. Personally, I like to catch and release these fish so that the younger generation can have a go at them too. While it is completely up to you whether or not you keep these fish, I suggest that if you don't have to keep them, let them go so that the younger generation can enjoy this limited resource as well and potentially get hooked on fishing for years to come. Remember that at some point we were all that kid that couldn't wait to catch their first fish. Now let's check in with senior editor Fred Galafaro. Fred? Thanks, Matt. And the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council has scheduled virtual regional workshops to gather input on managing the recreational sum of flounder fishery. The council is seeking public input to help evaluate different management strategies designed to minimize discards in the fluke fishery. The workshops are open to all, and you'll be able to provide input and feedback regarding discard concerns and potential management strategies. Registration is required, and you're encouraged to register at least 24 hours prior to the workshop. The workshop for our region is scheduled for next Wednesday, that's March 31st, from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can click the link on the screen to register. 
Uh, the workshop can be accessed using a computer, a tablet, or a smartphone. You can also join, you can participate with a phone, uh, with just a regular phone connection, but obviously you won't be able to see any of the presentations. Once you're registered, you'll receive an email from WebEx with the webinar information, including the webinar link, telephone number, and access code, along with a calendar invite. For the agenda and more info, go to www.mafmc.org slash workshop slash summer dash flounder dash msc and if you have any questions you can contact brandon muffley he's at b muffley b m u f f l e y at m a f m c dot org or you can give him a call at 302-526-5260 matt back to you if you need to get your boat ready for the upcoming season, there is two weeks left in the Big Marine Mate sale. Everything is on sale, including bottom paint at $65 per gallon. We have more details at the end of the broadcast or visit marinemate.com for details. And now let's hear from our correspondents from Montauk. We have Captain Timothy O'Rourke. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings from Montauk, everybody. Um, as you know, weather's getting better. Everybody's getting a little more excited. Boats are starting to get unwrapped here. I've been getting my boat ready. And uh, really looking forward to the upcoming season. A um, couple boats made it out to the Cod Grounds this weekend. Um, Paul Bruno on the Elizabeth II. He uh, went Sunday. Wasn't anything special. A couple little signs of life. Um, he reported three keepers and seven shorts. Um, unfortunately, no pictures from Paul. Uh, the other boat that was out was the Viking. Um, they did probably about the same thing. Uh, I don't know if they had a full boat, but there was plenty of people willing to go and they ended up with about nine fish total. Um, nothing spectacular, but they haven't been out in a while, and it was nice to see that there was a couple signs of life. In regards to the Viking, they're doing their extended offshore trip on Friday, which is gonna be a good trip, and usually that brings some big fish from way out east, south of Nantucket, some of the bigger wrecks out that way. So look forward to a report next week. And they, that, bo that boat is booked, and then they have an open boat on Saturday. So check out the website, make a reservation. Weather's supposed to be good. And uh, it beats sitting in the house or doing yard work. So come on out and go fishing and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. With our Flying Freshwater Report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, it's a beautiful day. Here we are, right on the cusp of a good fishing season. Right, I can feel it in my bones. Right now, here it is, the 20, 23rd of March and the bays are loaded with bunker. I can't believe it's, it's early. <laughs> I told my wife, we were out here walking around the bays, checking it out, and I said, you know what? I'll be bringing out my fly rod in the next two weeks. It's just, it's gonna be incredible. Now, guys I know went up to upstate, they, they stocked upstate. There's uh, plenty of fish in the areas that are open, and Connecticut, some of their rivers are open. Here on Long Island, they started stocking the ponds and they started stocking the little streams. So we were in the beginning. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully that's going to change in the next week or two. And uh, I'm praying for a great season. Tight lines, everybody. Remember, at the end of this broadcast, Paul will show us how to tie the half and half fly. If you're in the market for a new boat, there's an open house in Windhurst showcasing regulators and Southport boats. For COVID safe family fun with free food and drinks, visit EastshoreMarineNY.com for more information. From Northport, we have Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle. Beautiful sunny days in their 50s. You know, this is going to really get this water warmed up. I see a lot, a lot of clear water, which means the plankton hasn't started yet. So you're going to be looking for a forage like grass shrimp, small spearing working those edges of the uh, marshland so if you want to get out there and target bass remember we've got that new inline circle hook uh, law this year if you're going to be using worms or bait such like that if you've got your artificials try to keep those barbs crushed down it's great for these resident fish that are just beginning to awaken uh, you want sunny days sunny days are the key right now get out there and enjoy yourself remember the uh, local ponds here have been stocked so the trout are fantastic make sure you've got your freshwater license also check your saltwater registry this year. Until next week, I bid you peace and tight lines. Captain Mike Century has the latest from Staten Island. Thanks Matt and Tim, hope all is well. Well folks, Raritan Bay's definitely heating up. Went out March 23rd with Freddie Gamboa, charter and boat owner of Andreas Toy Charters out of Perth Amboa, New Jersey. 
Check him out on Facebook, Instagram. And my good friend Ralphie went out there. Water was definitely clear. Manhattan, you could not believe you could walk on water. That's how much bait there is. Uh, the clarity of the Raritan Bay is definitely phenomenally clean. That was definitely a big improvement. Uh, bass were definitely chewing. 30 inch stripers hit the deck, and that was pretty much what we had. Uh, great time, great food, great friends, uh, definitely good fishing. So the season's just about heating up. All we need is a couple more degrees of water temperature rise. We're looking at around 47 or 48 right now at the shallows. I give it about maybe Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If the wind from the east keeps pushing the cold air from the ocean towards the bay, I expect the temperatures to stay low. So we need a couple more westerly breeze to uh, definitely let the bay heat up. So with that said, guys, tight lines, and back to you, Matt. If you would like to be a part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we are looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around NY, Metro, and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact us at libayrat at gmail.com. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine and to be part of the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash Contest. Check out this video description on YouTube for all the related links and more information. And please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. See you right here next Thursday at the theallnewfisherman.com. Dollars you spend, you earn a grand prize ticket, which enters you into the running to win any of these great prizes. Every day, one finalist will be announced for each item. On Sunday, April 11th, six finalists will become our grand prize winners. The more tickets you earn, the more chances you have to win. Check out MarineMateInc.com every day to see if you're a finalist for the grand prize. I'm tying up two of my favorite flies. It's one is called the Clouser Minnow and the other one is a Lefty Deceiver. And I'm like, let's combine them. And then we call it the half and half. You know, it's a great fly by two of my very favorite tires. Uh, it just works incredibly well in the spring. Uh, I've done very well. It's one of my favorite flies. So let's get to the vice and tie one. Hello, Matt. So here we go to tie, start tying the half and half. It's a combination between a deceiver and uh, a clouser. So what we're going to do is start at about one third down. From the hook eye and build a two lumps still a lump there and one right in front of another lump and this is going to be the cradle for our, our lead eyes and do a figure eights right wrap around right under the base so what I'm doing is going right around the base, pulling it tight. And I'm going to put a little super glue on it just to really lock these, uh, these eyes really in there. Pretty good. Just don't glue your fingers. And then wrap it up. And that really will lock it in there, really tight. And now bring our thread back just to about the point. We're going to put our saddle hackle in. What I'm doing is, now Lefty was, he didn't, he didn't like line them up or anything like that. This is saddle hackle. I'm going to going to take him, kind of put, line them up a little bit like this. They don't have to be perfect. And you want a little bit. And then what I do is I will actually wet these. And that makes it a lot easier to work with. See how I wetted them? Well, they'll dry right away and they'll flare out and take on a more natural look. 
and tie it down like that. A couple of loose wraps, make sure they land on the top right. Each in there, trim the butts off. And wrap all the way down. And try. And if some get out of the way, just clip them off. Now, I like I really like this material right here. This is called Bill's Body Braid. Uh, Bill's a great guy and uh, makes a terrific product. And geez, I use it for fresh salt. It just it just is a terrific fly uh, a material. Wrap it in. Instead of using flat tinsel, I use this because it's so much easier to lay down. And tie it in just like that. Now, I'm going to use white bucktail for this area, but that's not the top of the fly. This is actually the bottom of the fly. When you finish, when we tie it off, it's actually going to turn over. It's actually going to turn over, and this will become the bottom of the fly. Just give you a little more space. All right, so... I'm going to take some white bucktail. I don't stack my bucktail uh, for this type of flies. I like the natural tapers that you get. If any, any uh, are too, uh, if they're too wild, you can always take them out. But I do want to hold them and clean up all these really tiny, 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 tiny pieces. Bring my thread to the front. Measure it. I want it to go back halfway down the tail. Right, and I'm going to trim them. And I'm going to give my bobbin a counterclockwise spin. And the reason is, the, see how it jumps back, the thread, so I can grab it. Pull it up. Go across the eyes like once. And then... Perfect. Now I go underneath and come over here. Now I turn my fly upside down. This is how it's going to be in the water uh, with the um, uh, with these uh, uh, with these weighted eyes that flips them over. Now I'm going to take a nice. This is kind of like a a pale yellow green type of bucktail I like the colors of it it really looks good I'm gonna measure it out again pull out all the short short stubby little bucktails um, way it measure it out I want it roughly roughly the same so trim it Give my bobbin another uh, we counterclockwise spin to, to grab the grab the bucktail and tie it off. And whatever reason, I always do well with a yellow half and half in the winter in the springtime it's one of my early spring flies i don't know why years ago i used to use uh mr. yellow twist uh, mr twister tails and i did very well early in the spring and cut it off it's 
you can see, this is really just an easy fly to tie. And it, what I love about it is, it is the best of both worlds. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English chew Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.